So, the material is electronic design, which indicates that it has to have design, right? So you will be you will be having design. We will I will be more uh, more concentrating on design rather than analysis. Uh, but for design, of course, you need analysis uh, uh, to be learned first. So if you first you need need to know uh, how to analyze a circuit, then you can think of design steps. And uh, if you look at the details of the module, uh, it's a three candidate module, uh, two hours of lecture, one hour of tutorial, 40% continuous assessment, which is further divided as 20% mid semester, 10% labs and as you can see a 10 percent design assignment so you'll be given uh, design uh, like what you did uh, last time like last time it was a, a very simple design that is the amplifier last year second year uh, electronics analog electronics module uh, but now this is uh, uh, beyond that because this is uh, electronic design a third year level module so you will be given uh, filter design uh, you'll be given the required outputs uh, or outcomes. Outcomes will be specified based on the group, and uh, you uh, you will have to design your filter, right? Uh, so now the contents. If you look at uh, then we have uh, sixty percent uh, for the final examination, which is again a two-hour paper. Mid-semester examination is a one-hour paper. The recommended uh, textbook is uh, Microelectronics by Seth Grant Smith. Copies are available in the library. If you <coughs> excuse me, if you look at the learning outcomes, you know what are only learning outcomes by now. Right? You are a third year student. So, if you complete successfully complete this module, uh, you will be able to analyze different signal, uh, single and multi-stage transistor circuits. So last year we uh, stick to the single stage amplifiers, but now we will be talking about multi-stage amplifiers as well, multi-stage and differential amplifiers. Design uh, single and multi-stage transistor amplifiers and uh, recognize the effort, uh, effect of feedback in the performance of amplification. So we'll be talking about uh, feedback as well. Design active filters to meet the requirements of the application. So, uh, you, sometimes there are situations where you will be given the application. Uh, the requirements are given and then you have to uh, select the proper uh, technique and topology, everything that suits with the, uh, the requirement. So, uh, the next outcome is design. Uh, sinusoidal and relaxation oscillators to give speci uh, to, uh, to, uh, to given specifications. Uh, so that is oscillators. Uh, sinusoidal oscillators, relaxation oscillators are non-sinusoidal uh, waveform generators. Select appropriate uh, power stages to satisfy the demands and select an appropriate heat sink for the power supply, power stage. So power stage is actually an output stage, uh, power amplifier stage. Um, uh, so you will have, you will be uh, using power amplifiers. There is no such design as uh, such uh, in power stages. So uh, you will have to select a particular uh, technique or particular class of amplifiers. Uh, according to your uh, requirements. Finally, use EDA uh, tools for circuit analysis. So you'll be doing that throughout the uh, design assignment as well, as well as through the lab classes. Again, the lab classes are uh, in this basic two-stage uh, sort of a uh, structure, that is pre-lab and in-lab. Uh, similar to what you had in the, I mean, similar in the sense, not the content is similar, but the uh, structure of labs. Uh, the conduction format is the same. So you'll have to get ready before you come in and then you do and show that you can work, that you can uh, do it, right? So uh, rubrics will be there that will uh, give you a guideline of what to do in order to score uh, something, some mark. Uh, topics, 
field effect transistors. So we talked about uh, BJDs in the second year. So we'll be talking about field effect transistors. We'll start the discussion today, of course. Then multi-stage and differential amplifiers, theory and design of feedback amplifiers, filters, oscillators, power amplifiers. Of course, uh, one is missing in here. That is, of course, not there. Was not there in the uh, secondary variable as well. So uh, we thought of uh, discussing that, although it's not in the syllabus, which is a very important topic for you, which is power supplies. So I'll be talking about power supplies, although it's not in the syllabus, right? Um, right now, uh, although this is the order in the uh, unit outline, uh, unit outline is already there in the course web as well. Uh, okay, let's go to the last nice side as well. Uh, what I was talking about is, uh, although this is the, oops, uh, this is the order with that appears in the uh, unit outline, I'll be swapping around the uh, topics uh, so that you are ready for the assignment. The assignment will be available in third week, which is a uh, uh, field design. So I'll be talking about filters just after uh, field effect transistors, right? So that you get enough knowledge uh, to start off with your assignment, right? And uh, the course web uh, electronic design is available under 2020 semester one. I think it's named as uh, 2020 February something like that. So you go through the stream. You will find the module and the access code is uh, EC3012-2020. Uh, of course, I have not uh, uploaded the stuff to the course web yet, but we will do it within today and tomorrow. <coughs> so if I pop up the, this is the unit study calendar, you can go through that, this will be available in the course web. And the unit study calendar, as you've seen uh, in the last year, so all the details are given in here. <coughs> no, this is not the one. So this is the one, uh, the lab groups and uh, there's a, uh, there, dates, groups, everything there. So everything will be published through the course webs for your reference. If there is any change, we will be announcing through that. Same procedures, same practices would be there if you uh, are unable to attend <coughs> any lab class for a serious reason. Right, can't be neighbors' death or something like that. It has to be a serious reason, your relative's death or a severe illness, not cough, cold. If it is cough and cold, I will have cancer the lecture today. Right, you feel you see that I, I, it's, it's rather difficult for me to talk. Right, but still, I'm conducting lecture, so those are not excuses. If you are down with maybe coronavirus or uh, chicken pox, uh, uh, measles, something like that, or dengue, that's an excuse. But in such a case, there are, are not planned events, right? In such a case, you have immediately let us know, myself or Subha, know that you are unable to attend the session and get an alternative session from us, right? <coughs> if it is a planned event like your wedding or your uh, sibling's wedding, right? Then uh, it's a planned event, it doesn't happen all of a sudden. So you know in a uh, few uh, months, before. So if it actually exactly falls on a particular day that you are having a lab class beforehand, you should get an uh, alternative. And what I would recommend is to uh, you for you to do the lab before you miss it, right? Before the uh, official uh, <coughs> slot that you are assigned for, uh, get an alternative session, right? So without the permission of two of us, no one is allowed to simply walk into a lab slot which is not yours. If it is yours, you can walk in. If it is not yours, you can't. You can't walk in without a prior approval. Right. <coughs> so 
So let's travel to content for the model. Right, the first topic we are talking about is uh, field effect transistors. Now the basic difference between the field effect transistors and BJTs. BJT, we know that the output current IC is controlled by the input current IB. IC is proportional to IB. But in the field effect transistor, it's not the input current that controls the output current, but it is the input voltage that output, uh, controls the output current. So that is why it is referred to as a field effect. Later on, we will see when it comes to actual MOSFETs. It's seriously an electric field that controls the output current. Right? So the key difference between these two, uh, one, the previous one that, that we learned, is uh, current control, that is the BJT, by the transistor is current control, and uh, the field effect transistor is a voltage control device. Right? The types. There are two main types of uh, fi uh, field effect transistors. One is the junction field effect transistor, which is abbreviated as JFET, and uh, the other is the uh, MOSFET or some call that as IG FET. IG stands for insulated gate field effect transistor or metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. When we come into that, we will. Uh, the structure of it, we will uh, see why is it called as uh, MOSFET or the IG effect. <coughs> uh, there are two main types of uh, MOSFETs. One is the depletion type MOSFET, which is abbreviated as D-MOSFET, and the other type is enhancement type MOSFET, E-MOSFET. Right. So, if you look at the whole uh, classification of field living transistors, there are two main types. Uh, junction field effect transistor and the metal oxide semiconductor or insulated gate field effect transistor on the right hand side. Um, and uh, oops. and uh, JFETs are anyway depletion mode. So JFETs can be further divided as N channel and P channel. We will see why, uh, what those are. Then uh, MOSFETs are divided into two subcategories as depletion MOSFETs, depletion mode MOSFETs, and uh, or depletion type MOSFETs and enhancement type MOSFETs. And then uh, they can further be divided by as N channel and P channel, uh, both the types. Right? The symbols are also given in here as a as an abbreviation. You can see clear differences are there in those symbols. We will uh, try to find out uh, a link between the construction and the symbol so that you don't mess up with the symbols. The JFET construction. Now there are two types of JFETs as I uh, already discussed: N channel and P channel. Uh, N channel is the most commonly or most widely used uh, version. Three terminals as you can see here, uh, gate, source and the drain. <coughs> so although the, um, this is actually a cross section, uh, what is actually there is uh, it's a it is like a cylinder. Let us say this is your channel and around it you have the gate as a ring, right? So this is as a ring, right? So around the gate you cut, uh, you make a cut around the channel and have the gate door, like you dot uh, a side circle around the uh, center of the channel, uh, outer surface to be made oppositely uh, dot, right? If the channel is N, you dot that ring to become P, right? If the channel is P, you make the uh, ring become uh, M, right? So that's the construction.
Now, in here you can see that there is a channel, there exists a channel. And without applying anything uh, to the gate, the channel is open. Right? So it converts. That indicates that it is a normally open device. Right? The BJT was a normally, uh, sorry, BJT was a normally open device, this is normally closed device. Right? Or so closed or open. Anyway, this is on. Right? Normally on. Right? Normally on means normally closed. Right? Closed switch means conducting switch. Right? So this is normally closed. Whereas BJT is normally open. Right? That is normally off. BJT is normally off without IB or without B VBE greater than 0.7 or the cutting voltage, there won't be any current in the output. But in the FET, without any gate voltage, the device conducts. Right? The symbol? Now, right, so this is enter. In between the gate and the uh, Uh, channel, you have a PN junction, right? You can see that there is a PN junction between the gate and the channel. If it is forward biased, the current would be from the gate to the channel. So, the simple implies that you have a channel, right? You have a channel and gate to the channel forward current would be inward right the opposite symbol i think it's there somewhere uh, the p channel one uh, we had it there the p channel the arrow is outward because the gate is p Right? Uh, sorry, uh, channel is P and gate is N. So, channel to gate forward current would be from the channel to the gate. Right? So, arrow is outward. Right? You see that there is a link between the symbol and the construction. Right? Right. Now, let's see. This can operate in the depression mode on link. <coughs> depression mode means now the channel already exists right channel is there it can conduct so what you can do is to deplete the channel you know what is meant by depleting you remove the charge carriers right you make the channel having no charge carriers no magnetic charge carriers so <coughs> the conduction will stop right now, how can you make the channel depleted? You have a depletion layer here. You have a depletion layer here. So, if you reverse bias the gate channel PN junction, you can increase the depletion layer penetration and effectively the channel can be depleted. Right? Now let's look at the operations. Now in that case, I, I jump a little bit. Now we are trying to reverse bias the gate channel PA junction, meaning that there is no significant current going into the gate. Right? It's a reverse bias voltage that will cause the channel to deplete and to stop the current. So what is controlling the channel current? What does control channel current? It is a reverse bias voltage, not a current. Right? The reverse saturation current is constant, very small, but it is constant, almost constant, unless it is broken down. Right? So, it is a voltage applied to the gate that controls the channel current. Right? So, that is why it is field effect transistor, the voltage control device. Right? It's a electric field, electric voltage that controls the output current. Right? 
Right, now what happens? <coughs> If we now in in here uh, for n channel the gate source voltage can never be positive, right? That doesn't mean anything to you. I mean anything uh, that doesn't do anything to the channel, it will become a forward bias P N junction. And in the same way, P channel V G S can never be negative, right? Now let's look at how this operates. First, we will assume that there is no voltage between the gate and the source. So the rest or the uh, ambient or uh, the, the steady state uh, uh, depletion layer penetration is there. Right? You keep on increasing the negative voltage or reverse bias voltage between the gate and the source or gate and the channel effectively you increase the penetration uh, into the depletion layer penetration into the gate and there will be one point where the two sides would meet each other which is referred to as the pin right then the full channel is closed at that point whatever the voltage that you apply between the drain and the source you cannot have any current so that is actually the closing down voltage. Pinch of voltage is the voltage at which the channel is fully closed down. It's like a tap. Right? It's like a tap. You fully close down the tap. Now actually uh, 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 this is sort of uh, linked or, or, or mapped to the operation of a tap. Right? So the, the lever that you uh, turn is the gate, right? And drain is effectively the electron drain, which is the, the, the output side, downside. Now in here, electrons will run up. Electrons will go from bottom to top. Like if you apply a, a positive voltage at the top, electrons will go from the source to the drain, right? Like water goes from the input side to the output side. Right? So, you can map the operation of the field effect transistor to the operation of a tap. Right? If it is fully closed, whatever the pressure you apply at the input side, there won't be a single drop coming out of the tap. Right? Unless it is broken down. If you can apply a pressure such that the, uh, the, the mechanism can break down, then you will get some drops of water. Same thing would be there in here as well. If you apply a large, extremely large voltage that the semiconductor will break down, then you can get some current. But it is broken. Right? The next is, oh, this is what they have shown here. The next operation is, okay, I'll, I'll go to the Now, if you, uh, without applying any gate voltage, if you uh, apply a drain source voltage, right? I have the. Right, this side is positive, this is your drain, this is your source and this is your gate. This is N channel. If you apply a larger voltage in here, this side becomes positive, this side becomes negative. This is P, this is N. Now what is the charge of uh, the depletion layer? Depletion layer has a certain charge. Is it positive or negative? Now recall your direct knowledge. You have n types of semiconductor there. So are they positive charges or negative charges? What is there in the depletion zone? 
Masuk yang mana begitu? Positive Right? So the depression layer is positive Now what happens? You have positiveness here, negativeness here What will happen to the depression zone? The total volume will remain unchanged but the penetration on the top will become larger Why? There is more positiveness on the top Less or more negativeness on the bottom Right, so it will push electrons which will sort of reshape the depletion zone such that the top side would penetrate more, bottom side would penetrate less. Keep on increasing the voltage, the shape would come more inward and inward on the top and outward and outward on the bottom. Still keep in the same depletion zone volume because there is no difference in the reverse bias mode. Gate source reverse bias voltage will remain unchanged. Right? So therefore, penetration, the total volume doesn't change. There won't be any further electron crossing the boundary, but it will reshape because of the pressure, positive and negative pressures from the top and the bottom. It will reshape and there will be one point where the two tips meet each other. When the two tips meet each other, what happens? The channel is fully closed down. If the two tips at the top meet each other, the channel is fully closed down. Right? Fully closed down means the current will stop. The moment that the current stops, there won't be any potential gradient in the channel. The potential gradient is actually what uh, made this uh, the edges to bend. Right? In, inside to uh, move inward and outside to move outward that was because of the potential gradient through the channel the moment that the channel current stops that gradient vanishes and the tips tend to move apart again what happens the channel current will be there again the tips moving so it will be a dynamic stability that will be there so they will open up close up open up close up open up close up that will happen continuously. So it's a dynamic stability. Thereafter, there won't be any increase in the channel current. So the curve, if you keep on increasing the uh, drain source voltage, oops, what happened there? It will look like this. Until it becomes the bench off, it will go straight, but thereafter, it will saturate right it will saturate there so that is when VGS is equal to 0 if we apply a negative VGS what will happen the depletion layer penetration would increase so the pinch of point will become will, will, will uh, arrive earlier because you have a narrower channel width if you apply negative VGS voltage. Right? Larger the VGS negative voltage, the earlier the channel will close down the page of the bar. Right? So therefore, the curves would go like this. when you make VGS less than 0. You make VGS less than 0, nothing is going to happen because the thin, thin depletion layer and you have in this channel. So, there is no uh, enhancement mode of operation that we talk about. This is uh, ID and this is VTS. Right? So, increasing drain source voltage will increase the current up to up until the pinch of focus. After pinch of focus, it will get saturated. saturated. So, this is what is shown in here. All the stuff. 
This is what we have discussed so far. Now if you map the VGS values, like we were talking about uh, increase in the negativeness of the VGS. So if you map these points, the pinch of points, you will get this parabola. Right? And this is the great pinch of point where the entire channel will be closed forever. Right? So if the VGS is larger than or negativeness is larger than that pinch, uh, uh, pinch of value that is here, there won't be any channel current going. It is like fully closed down. Tap. Right? If you close, open up the tap a little bit, depending on the pressure on the inside or in, in inlet, the flow level would change. You apply a lower pressure, lower uh, water output would be there. If you, have, if you apply a larger pressure, right, larger water output would be there for the same opening. That is what we see the other side. Like right? you increase the. Uh, voltage, VGS voltage, you get a larger and larger current, but this effect is not there in the tap. The pinch of effect is not there in the tap, of course, right, because there are no charges in the tap, right, but in here you have it because the, uh, the reshaping of the uh, depletion zones and the tips would meet each other and that will cause the dynamic standard, right. The equation that covers this uh, parabola is the is called the characteristic equation, and in this case, it is transfer characteristics. That is the linkage between the output and the input. Now, for the BJT, we have transfer characteristics. Yes. What is the transfer characteristic equation for the BJT? We talked about transfer characteristic equation, and we talked about the input uh, characteristic equation as well. Transfer characteristic equation, transfer characteristic means output to input linkage or input to output linkage. What was it for VGT? Transfer what was input? What was the output? Input is IB. Output? I? Right, so what is the transfer characteristic equation? I C equals to beta B. It's a linear, right? Input characteristics. Input characteristics is input voltage uh, and input current. Input current versus input voltage. It was I B equal to uh, that uh, I I S into the power B uh, B E over eta K T minus one. Right, like that characteristic equation, we can have equation. Right, that is input. Here, why don't we talk about input characteristics? Why don't we talk about input characteristics? And for the BJT, we talked about output characteristics as well. Right, that was IC versus VCE. Then right? we had output characteristics, we had input characteristics, transfer characteristics, we didn't First on it, we didn't highlight that, but we had the equation IC equal to beta IP. Right? Now, here, why don't we talk about input characteristics? Why don't we talk about input characteristics? Input is addressed by us P in junction. Right? So, what is the special characteristic curve that you have to talk about? Nothing, right? So, it is like saturated voltage, right? A saturated current, right? Constant current. So, there is no such characteristics as such. And the output characteristics, of course, output characteristic curve is what you see here. It is very close to the characteristics of a BJT, output characteristic of a BJT. But instead of input characteristics, we have this transfer characteristic curve, which is characterized by this equation ID is equal to ID SS 1 minus VGS over VP square. Now what is ID SS? ID SS is the drain current saturation, right? That is the maximum 
then drain current that is there when Vg is equal to 0 that is IDSS right so if in this equation you can find it that when VGS is equal to 0 ID is equal to IDSS right then what is VP when VP equals or VGS is equal to VP what happens to this side become 0 when VGS equal to VP right hand side becomes 0 and ID becomes 0 so in this this is that VP right the great pinch of point pinch of voltage we call it as pinch of voltage it's a characteristic for a particular BJT pinch of voltage is uh, the voltage at which the entire channel closes down right so that is uh, illustrated in this equation even if VGS is equal to VP ID becomes zero under any conditions right <coughs> so the p-channel operation similar but completely opposite instead of negative voltage you need to apply a positive voltage and drain should be negative uh, so should be po should be positive and so on and so forth so completely reverse operation would be there in the p-channel also this breakdown can be there that is the failure right like what we had in the uh, VGTs you can have the uh, failure zone right right so that's FETS you have any questions about uh, JFETS the operation or the characteristics if not we can go move on to the MOSFETs now MOSFETs well metal oxide semiconductor MOS stands for metal oxide semiconductor also called as IGFETs insulated gate field electron system let's look at the uh, before we yeah there are two types right characteristics more or less same we will talk, look at that uh, two types are there two main types of uh, MOSFETs are there as we already talked about uh, depletion type MOSFET and enhancement type MOSFET depletion type MOSFET can operate in both modes like uh, enhancement mode and depletion mode whereas enhancement type MOSFET can operate only at the enhancement type in, the, in, in enhancement type mode enhancement type uh, mode of operation we will see why Right, this is just a summary at the beginning introduction. Later on, by looking at the construction, we will see why these are so. Now, uh, MOSFETs are very sensitive because they have a insulated gate. Right, you have the gate metal here, but in between you have a silicon dioxide layer. So there is no electrical connection between the gate metal and the channel this is isolated so any static charge accumulation can damage the operation and damage even the, the physical construction of the MOSFET so we'll have to take more care about the procedures are given here like static and static and things like that have to be used right and in operation you need to have bypassing resistors to neutralize any accumulated charge in the uh, gate metal right you usually have a shunting resistor uh, we will talk about biasing circuits later on we have a shunting uh, resistors to bypass the gate to the ground so that there won't be any accumulated charge right let's say for an example we, we are we are undergoing an unknown operation right when you want to turn on let's say you want to uh, give a gate more high gate voltage and if you turn off you need to turn uh, put that off, out and the moment that you take it out if you don't bypass the gate to the ground the charge will still be accumulated in the gate metal right the symbols are given here sometimes the uh, there will be this uh, substrate 
uh, unconnected to the uh, source so most of packages it will be tied up with the source and as you can see here we will I'll come into this little later on again the symbols the error direction and so on and so forth and clearly you can see that the gate is not connected with the uh, channel in the symbol even earlier JFET you had the arrow directly to the gate but here it is gate is completely separated draw right that indicates that it is, ha it is having an insulated gate right now the IG effect term IG effect insulated gate the gate is insulated gate is isolated right so that is why IG effect term now what is what most metal oxide semiconductor when you come from the gate to the channel you pass a metal which is the gate metal you pass a semiconductor sorry uh, oxide the silicon dioxide insulator and then come the channel which is semiconductor so metal oxide semiconductor this is metal this is oxide this is semiconductor so metal oxide semiconductor and as you can see here there is no electrical connection between the gate and the channel at all right so the field effect is really there in the MOSFETs we will look at the operation right now the symbol right you can see a continuous channel yes you have a continuous channel right this is actually n plus n plus like little heavier doping concentration so that you have an ohmic junction between ohmic connection between the uh, drain source electrodes and the channel and then the channel is there so it's a continuous channel you have right so uh, that is shown in here now what about this arrow now if the channel is n substrate is p substrate is p what would be the forward current from the sub uh, between the substrate and the substrate and the channel from p to n from substrate to the channel right so that is what you can see in this arrow arrow again like in the previous case shows the forward current possible from the substrate to the channel earlier it was from the gate to the channel now it is from the substrate to the channel right and you always tie up the substrate with the source not with the drain right drain is the uh, the output side sort of source is the input side source of now this is input side for the charge carriers right majority charge carriers right so and the p channel p channel the arrow is outward because channel is p substrate is n so the forward current would be from the channel to the substrate right now let's look at the operation Now if we connect, like in the previous case, a voltage between these two, first case, you have the channel, I am now expanding the diagram, and you have the insulator I'll do it the other way around let's assume that this is the channel uh, the insulator and this is the channel and the substrate 
substrate is p channel is n this is our insulator and this is the material right now this is negative the channel is positive the substrate is positive now what happens in here you have a depletion layer inside the channel this side is positive what is the direction of electric field in here electric field would be from positive side to the negative side directions would the would be the push for the electrons the electric field is for the attraction for positive charges now because this side is negative the electrons in here would be pushed away to the substrate because this is negative due to this electric field electrons will be pushed away from the channel making the depletion zone penetration higher increase in the depletion rate the larger the voltage that you apply the more the penetration will be and there will be one point that the entire channel is occupied by the depletion zone right now you can see here that there is nothing to be done with the current, input current. It's an input electric field, the electric field that is there in the insulation layer that causes all these things to happen. So the field defect transistor, the meaning of it really visible in it. Right? So that is the depletion mode of operation. What if you apply a positive gate voltage? The process would be opposite direction, right? More electrons will be attracted from the substrate, the multi-carry electrons, from the substrate to the channel, reducing the depletion so on. So, now here, although earlier we did not talk about any enhancement mode, we can have enhancement mode here, Why? Right? It's not a gate. Uh, sorry, it's not a uh, PN junction that we uh, forward bias or reverse bias like in the JFET. JFET, we wanted to reverse bias the gate channel junction. Forward biasing doesn't do any difference, any significant difference. But here, it's an electric field that we create so that li larger voltage is needed to cause the depletion zone to change a little. So we can talk about enhancement mode as well. So we can have both enhancement mode as well as the depletion. Enhancement mode as well as the depletion mode can be there. Right? Now, similar to that gate source voltage, the second case, what happens? Second case, if we apply a voltage between the drain and the source now what happens to this this is my channel n channel we have the depletion zone which is positive now we effectively apply positive to this side and negative to this side here right so positiveness 
a positive charge density on top side would be higher bottom side would be lower so there will be a potential gradient which will cause the depletion zone to reshape itself I'll draw it in a different color maintain the same volume volume of the depletion zone will not be changed but the uh, shape would be different top side more penetration bottom side less penetration right now if you keep on increasing that vds voltage v drain source v ds there will be one point that the pinch of would occur that is the top edge will close down the entire channel again the diamond assembly will be there the exactly same similar thing that was there earlier in the JFS would occur in here as well the channel will be fully closed which will, which will re remove the voltage gradient that will again open up the channel then the current will be there that current will cause potential gradient and that will touch again and that dynamic stability will be there so the characteristic curve again would look similar to what we have seen in the JFET same right so same characteristic curves would be there although that the actual operation is little different and the construction is different right earlier it was a reverse biasing gate channel voltage that was changing the depletion zone or the channel behavior but now it is an electric field that governs the channel behavior right electric field that is created in that thin semiconductor uh, silicon dioxide layer now how do you create silicon dioxide we talked about uh, fabrication in the second you expose that surface to oxygen Right? Silicon can layer with the oxy oxygen mask properly. Whatever the area that you want to be in silicon dioxide will be exposed to high densities of oxygen so that there will be a molecular layer of silicon dioxide. Right? So silicon dioxide is a good, good insulator, electrical insulator, right? That will create the insulation layer. Right? So the equation, <coughs> now we talk, we talk about uh, depletion mode as well as enhancement mode operations. Uh, this part here, it is the depletion mode of operation, beyond this point is the enhancement mode of operation, right? That is, you apply a positive VGS voltage, you get the enhancement mode of operation you get the uh, apply a negative voltage uh, you get the depletion mode of operation so it is this device is also normally uh, normally open device right normally on device right normally on device so it is conducting without applying a gate uh, voltage so you try to close it but here you can open it further right you can open it further that is the enhancement mode of operation right the characteristic curve the characteristic equation id idss minus one uh, one minus vgs so vp square so it's the same equation the p channel same similar operation but exactly opposite then we have the enhancement type MOSFET now this is the construction as you can see here well this is a channel but that's channel this is called the channel this is from the textbook so it can't be wrong well textbook even can be wrong sometimes I have found errors in uh, not set us with the Hogart electronic systems okay. so 
you be uh, logical, right? So one day Samanthi was, uh, Samanthi came to me and said uh, about this BJT constructions, uh, BJT depletion, uh, so you need to charge intensity. Uh, she was showing that the guard look and said, okay, this is not as I explained. As if this is been saying, then whatever I have taught for 10 years is wrong. And what I have learned is wrong and what I have taught is wrong. But then it took my mind that, okay, if it is the case, if that BGT cannot operate the way that we, we actually see the BGT is operating, <laughs> the, now, uh, the, uh, the doping concentration of the base and the collector. The collector should have the lowest doping concentration so that a larger penetration is there so that acceleration field is created. Right? So if it is otherwise, if the base has a lower doping concentration and collector has a larger doping concentration, the EAD would never work in the way that it is working now. Right? So I said that too. And then we check it with the central smith. Central smith has it in the correct way. So there is a mistake in Google. Right? So that can be the case. So you just be logical, right? Then at least you can check a second reference rather than believing what was there in the book. Right? So right, now here, where's the channel gone? It is said that it is same channel, the channel is not there. Right? This is its construction. Right? There is no channel. You have to induce the channel. That is why it is not operating in the depletion mode. Right? There is no channel there. So when no gate voltage is applied, there won't be any current because there is no channel. Right? Now what? So this is it. Okay, first we will look at the symbols and things like that. Right, now here you can see that there is no channel there. So, okay, uh, to go with that, the symbol doesn't have a channel. Earlier you had a continuous channel in here, but now it's not there. Symbol looks more like the previous one. MOSFET, uh, depression mode MOSFET, but broken channel, discontinued channel. Right? You have the substrate separately or substrate connection separately, drain separate, source separate, no link line there. That is to indicate that it is a broken channel or non-existing channel that you are talking about, a virtual channel. We call it as a pseudo channel. Right? So, how can you create that? Again, the directions are the way that I have talked about. Like, if there was a channel, right, uh, the substrate is P, the forward current would be inward or into the channel. Right? Before we come here, let's take this page. Now what happens here? You apply a gate source voltage, a positive gate source voltage. Right, what will happen? Same principle, there will be a electric field and electric field in here from this end to that end in the, uh, the, uh, the silicon dioxide cellular insulator that electric field will attract electrons towards the the mildly carrier electrons that are there in the P layer towards the uh, the uh, insulator channel and this will cause a thin layer of electrons just like an H channel. 
in channel is an area where the electron density is higher right so you induce a pseudo n channel there was no channel there but when you apply the voltage more and more electrons would accumulate around the such uh, the edge that is the insulator that will create an n channel n like channel right so that is how it operates after that channel is created any voltage that will be applied here what will it do more positiveness here so the channel would form like that more negativeness here right more negativeness on this side so channel would be reformed like this because more negativeness on the bottom so electrons will spread down on that end and narrow down on the top end so again that pinch off and things like that we keep on increasing that vds voltage right there will be one point that channel channel on one end the top end will completely vanish we will close down the channel and that pinch off stability would be there right however this will not work in the depletion mode because there is no channel there and this device is a normally closed device normally off device right normally off device uh, compared to the vjt this and vjt both are normally off devices right so people tend to use replace vjt is with mosfets for different purposes because mosfet as you can see here uh, i mean d mosfets uh, e mosfets e mosfet d mosfet both actually would have uh, high extreme high input impedance in steady state transient current can be there because when you energize it there can there will be a little current going to the Base, uh, the gate metal and charge accumulation would be there. When you discharge the gate, there will be a little transient current coming out because you will need to neutralize that charge. But for steady state, the current is zero because there is an insulator. Right? So, that is compared to the BJT is very much advantageous because BJT needs an input current to be there. So, if you have a weaker source, BJT might be troublesome. Because of in the sense it can generate some sensors are there. Some sensors they can generate the voltage but not a significant not a significant amount of cards. So in such a case, FUX would work. And the bit high very very good characteristic that FET has is that it's high, very high input impedance, extremely high input impedance. Or like infinite input impedance. Right? Because gate is isolated right so however DMOS set is a normally open normally one device so therefore it cannot replace directly the uh, DJ right in switching applications right in application applications if you buy it properly yes you can right Now, in the curve, you can see that this uh, earlier the characteristic curve was on the negative side of VGS, right? And we had a VIDSS, that is the saturation, that is uh, uh, the, the drain, drain source current at saturation or drain current at saturation. But now, it is not the case. That is uh, now uh, there is no such, such a current, but you have a starting point. Starting point is the threshold voltage beyond which the MOSFET would turn off, the E MOSFET would turn off. Below that, there is no conduction. Media. 
So in this example, it is two volts. Uh, Vt is two volts, which is the threshold voltage, which is needed for the uh, for it to create or induce a ch pseudo channel, right? Otherwise, characteristics and things like that. This equation even looks alike, a little different though, but more or less same. Uh, if you like, uh, if you uh, play around with these values, like if you take V T out, you will see V G S over V T, and V T is a, a constant, and K is a constant, so that I D S S is a constant, right? So looks alike, but little different equation. K is a constant that is uh, specified for the particular VGT. It depends on the uh, constructional details of the channel with uh, the, the uh, width and the length of the uh, construction. Uh, ID is equal to K VGS minus VT uh, square. Right? There is no harm in changing the uh, two, data, two uh, terms VT and VGS because it's a square. Right, but it is meaningful to have VGS minus VT because VT is less than VGS. Right? <coughs> so the uh, P channel, P channel, what happens is you accumulate holes towards the uh, gate insulator by applying a negative voltage to the gate. We come back to the uh, in comparison to the train. Uh, the source rather. Complementary MOS, C MOS, it's basically sort of uh, push pull pair, N MOS and P MOS, that uh, N channel, uh, P channel MOSFETs. This is a construction that usually is there um, in uh, gates, uh, 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 logic gates, right? Uh, C MOS pairs. A summary, right? The equations and things like that are there in here. Uh, we don't have to bother about this, uh, the details of the K a lot because the K will be uh, given in the data sheet. Biasing. Fixed bias for the uh, BJ, uh, JFX. Now we want uh, the gate to be negatively biased, so uh, minus voltage to be given. Now fixed bias is where you uh, apply a fixed voltage for the base, uh, for the gate, which is actually not practically uh, easy because you need two supplies to be there. Um, now in the analytical circuit, now although you have this gate uh, resistor uh, so that uh, for the input you have a higher impedance in here right if you just have the voltage source it will be like uh, a zero or very close to zero voltage between the gate and the source for the signal that is why you have this large resistor here gate resistor is very large it's in that make also hundreds of kilohertz range usually But when it comes to DC analysis, because there is zero gate current, you can neglect the resistor here, right? And therefore, the voltage of the gate is exactly this VGG, and uh, the current is ID uh, equal to IDSS, 1 minus VGS or VP. VP is a characteristic for the BJT, uh, for the uh, particular FET. Now, analytically, if you want to find out, resolve this circuit, what you have need to do is to substitute this in here, right? VGS is equal to VGG, and VP is given, IDSS is given, so you can find ID. Uh, graphically, you have this curve, right? And you know uh, VGSS, or oh, sorry, rather VG, V. G S, right? So you know the VGS value, you can find ID value, right? 
this is some somewhat optimum right somewhat optimum point is IDS is uh, by 4 and VP by 2 right pitch off by 2 that is sort of an optimum point like what we discussed about uh, the for, uh, optimum point for the uh, BGA case is we we uh, we see we uh, CC divided by 2 right uh, likewise here VP divided by 2 now in this case VP or VGS should in magnitude always be less than VP right uh, you can't have VGS as beyond this part right so always V VGS magnitude of VGS should be less than or equal to magnitude of VP right this is applicable for both n and p mos p both are positive and both are negative right n mos vp is a negative value so in magnitude vgs should be less than or vgs should be actually in between 0 and uh, vp right so that is something that we use in analytical purposes so this is what i was talking about example can go through that then you have self bias self bias you don't have that uh, uh, negative voltage given there instead you have just a resistor a large value resistor hundreds of ohms or mega ohms value resistor why do you need that large value even a low, low, low small value would do it for uh, the DC biasing but when it comes to signal the smaller the resistors that you have between the gate and the ground the larger the shunting would be right so that is why you need a large resistor to be there so that signal will not be shunted through the uh, resistor in the same time the resistor will give you the required biasing in the DC right now <coughs> when it comes to DC biasing you can actually neglect the resistor right why this voltage is zero there is no current in the DC so the voltage here is zero so this is actually like a ground right VG is ground but we don't know VS right we don't know VS right from this equation this is the same current this is the same current VS is actually ID RS right so VGS is minus IDRS, right? Hey, VGS is minus IDRS. So uh, in that case, this is that line minus id rs line the point where the two intercepts would give you the uh, biasing point q point analytically do we have that analytical so if we take this out Analytically, VGS is equal to minus ID RS and uh, ID is equal to ID SS 1 minus VGS over VP squared. So if you substitute uh, VGS equal to YDRS, you get uh, IDSS 1 plus IDRS over VP. Keep in mind that VP is negative, right? VP is a negative value squared. Now what is unknown in here? 
id is unknown right so you will get an equation a id squared plus b id plus c equals to zero so what is id then minus right so from this you get two different values which is the correct one one is id uh, sorry not id uh, so yeah id in this case will have to be less than id ss also by substituting id you can find vgs right once you find id you will get vgs which has to be in magnitude vgs magnitude should be less than or equal to magnitude of vp that value is the right value right you get two id values one of them is out of the Bridge. We will not satisfy that second requirement, which is VGS has to be between zero and P. Right? So when you have values, we will uh, let's take this example and see we get. It. There is an example here. <coughs> right? So if you take this example. together with this right v g s is equal to minus i d r s is 1k that is 1000 right and uh, i d is equal to i d s s is given as 8 into 10 to the power minus 3 uh, into 1 minus VGS is ID uh, thousand R ID over VP is six. Now this is negative, VP is negative, so those two cancels out, so this becomes minus square. Now can someone help me to expand this, please? So six thirty six comes out thirty six. ID equals 8 into 10 to the power minus 3 6 minus 1000 ID squared right which is how much Multiply how much is eighty to thirty six? How much is eighty to thirty six? Yeah, eighty to thirty six. Two hundred eighty eight into 10 to the power minus 3 minus 96 id plus 8000 id squared this is 36 id so total equation becomes 8000 id squared minus minus 
What is ID? Point zero one three. There has to be two values. This hundred and forty two How much is it? ID equals <coughs> what are the two values quickly? Should be in millions. Which one? This one? Yeah. What do you mean? What are the two values? <laughs> what is more important is that? Well, in the examination, you have to be correct. <laughs> so that is why I want you to use the calculator, right? So I did the mistake because I didn't use the calculator. Okay. So what are the two values? Quickly. Guys, you are in third year now. If you take that long to uh, simplify a quadratic equation, Zero point thirteen thirteen milliampere, right? Thirteen point how, how much? Thirteen point nine milliampere and two point five milliampere. Both positive. Negative. So this is of course not possible. Ah, both. Uh, so both these values are positive, right? Yeah, that is what I asked, right? Now what is VGS? Right? What is VGS? VGS is minus IDRS, right? So VGS is minus ID into thousand. So VGS equal to 13.9 volts or VGS equal to 2.5 volts. What is VP? Minus 2.5 volts. VP is equal to 6, right? Or 6 volts minus 6 volts which means this is wrong right so therefore vgs equals minus 2.5 volts id equals 2.5 milli amperes so this is how you get rid of the unwanted value from the public right Right. You can check this, right? Check this out. Do this uh, as a homework. Then we have the voltage divider bias, right? This is just another example. You can do the same thing, right? 
what is divided by s there you have a very precise even much better than uh, the bjt case because bjt you had to do an assumption uh, that the current here is considerably small compared to the current in this branch but here there is no current there is no current going in there so it's actually an ideal voltage device right which will give you an exact voltage uh, that you need right however please don't uh, forget to uh, keep the uh, uh, r2 large enough so that the input impedance r1 parallel r2 would be the input impedance for the of uh, of pam uh, sorry for, for the amplifier right ac six ac analysis uh, to be large enough, right? So R1 R2 has to be in mega ohm range or hundreds of kilo ohm range. Now in here, the analysis is little bit different. Vg, I'm not going to write it. Vg is the voltage divided version of VDD, right? Then Vg uh, from here, V uh, S is actually we uh, you know when you know this voltage like what we did earlier vgs is uh, this minus that idrs minus uh, or vg minus idrs right this is what you get here vgs is vg minus idrs right now the the other characteristic equation is there so you substitute i'm not going to do that in here So you have two equations now. Earlier we had uh, <coughs> VGS is equal to minus IDRS, but now we have VG minus IDRS. So you substitute VGS into the characteristic equation, simplify it the same way that we did. You get two answers because it's a quadratic equation. You get two answers. One will give you a VGS which is beyond the range. Only one of the results will give you the Correct VGS value, which is between zero and VP. Right, same technique. <coughs> the only difference here is that the replacement for VGS is different. So, this is what happens when RS changes. Increasing RS, decreasing RS will change the biasing point. So this is an example. You can try it out. MOSFETs. MOSFETs. You don't use. Uh, we usually don't use the uh, fixed bias, which is just the voltage. But we use the self bias. Right? Self bias again. The voltage here would be zero. This is for uh, D MOSFETs. And then the if the rest of the calculations would be the same. Right? Uh, there is no difference in there. Uh, and uh, <coughs> voltage divided by s also as same as the previous case and uh, you have a fixed bias uh, the previous one actually fixed bias and uh, feedback bias is also there uh, like what we had in the collective feedback bias right because we can have actually this uh, uh, enhancement mode of operation Right, for enhancement mode of operation, you can use that, but not for depletion mode of operation. But for amplification, we usually don't use this. For amplification, what we use is uh, either fixed bias or self bias for the voltage divided bias. Right? For uh, enhancement MOSFETs, also, what we do is that. Right? So, However, uh, when it comes to the analysis of uh, uh, enhancement MOSFETs, the technique is little different, right? One of the results, as far as I could remember, becomes a negative or less than. Now, the earlier the test was, magnitude of VGS should be less than VP, magnitude of VP. Or essentially, VGS should be between 0 and now, one of the results will be less than V threshold. 
Only one would be that then you will show. This is the time. Right? Because again, what, I, what you are solving are this equation. That is, I D uh, equals K V T S minus uh, V threshold squared and whatever the input voltage V G yeah, that you get. V G S in terms of I D. Right? When you solve these two equations, you get a quadratic equation for I D. Right? One of the results will give you a voltage VGS less than the threshold voltage, which is not the correct answer. The other one will give you a VGS voltage less than threshold, which is the correct answer. Right? So that is how you calculate. Right, let's quickly talk about uh, design as well, like what we talked about uh, earlier. Now, there is no hard and fast uh, ruling like what we did earlier, like 10% uh, of the voltage to be uh, the emitter voltage and so on and so forth, the voltage that is not there, but this is a rough guideline. Uh, I did to be approximately 50% IDSS or maybe third, uh, uh, one third or be, uh, sorry IDS, ID to be 50%, uh, VDS to be one third, right, that is the gate source, drain source voltage to be one third of the uh, total voltage approximately and RD to be approximately three times RS, this is just a rough guide. Right, although they can deviate from this. So again, like what we did earlier, you had to uh, uh, come up with different, different, uh, propose different values and uh, come up with a, with an uh, answer. Now, Let's look at some of the FET data sheets. So, this is our VP. Minus 8 volts is the VP. Right? What else do you need from uh, this? IDSS you need, right? Cut off voltage, typical value is minus 3, right? Maximum possible pinch of voltage VP is minus 8. So you may take this, the typical value and go ahead with the calculations. Then you have uh, IDSS. Where is that? IDS, IGS, IDSS, there, there you go. Right? IDSS typically 10 milliampere. So you will be working with this. Right? These are the two values that you need to be take, uh, need to uh, read from the data sheet. Right? Because you know that ID is equal to IDSS 1 minus VP, VGS over VP square. So VGS is a variable, ID is a variable, the constants are IDSS and VP. So IDSS, VP, both are there in the data sheet. Then EMOSFET. Threshold voltage, minimum 1, maximum 5, right, gate source threshold voltage. Then the other parameter is K, 
where is that k Special voltage is given there. Anyway, looks like I had to wind up the class uh, at this point because my uh, battery is running low. Uh, so we'll discuss the rest uh, next week. Uh, we'll start the AC analysis, and uh, the tutorial will be there next week. Tutorial will be on the DC biasing, right? Biasing calculations. We will discuss further details there. So next week I will be finishing the MOSFETs. And the week after, we will be, I'll be starting the uh, discussion on um, filters. Right? So today I am not taking the 11 time slot. We will dance to it to be there. Okay. And uh, the tutorials this time, this year, would be. Uh,